Hey everybody, welcome back to Vegas Weekly for Saturday, May the 7th, 2022. We've got a kind of a big show for you today. We're going to talk about some breaking news of sorts in Las Vegas this week that I think uh, could really dramatically alter the strip as we know it. Yeah, really. Uh, I'm going to introduce you to yet another new Vegas-related YouTube channel that I think is worth your while. Then we're going to talk briefly about how this show could get all fancy-like coming up in the near future. And uh, finally, we'll touch on some changes to our membership program. Uh, put that at the end for those of you who are not interested in that. Uh, as always, all of our content will always remain completely 100% free to everyone. So have no fears, folks. First off today, I wanted to talk about uh, some news. It was first uh, reported that uh, I would say probably six or eight six or eight weeks ago I saw it on the well, I think the Vital Vegas Twitter or something to the effect that uh, Caesars might very well be trying to sell the Flamingo, which kind of came out of left field for a lot of us. I think we've been thinking, well, maybe they'll move Planet Hollywood or Cromwell or something, uh, a property that doesn't seem so integral and so integrated into the rest of their holdings on the Strip. Uh, but this week we got further confirmation that that is in fact the case. Now the interesting thing about it is apparently Caesars uh, is trying to find a buyer and is asking one billion, that's a B, billion dollars for the property. Which of course is one of the most historically uh, significant properties anywhere in Las Vegas. I mean I guess you could say El Cortez or Golden Gate downtown. But there's really no other property on the Strip that's been around as long, uh, even though it looks nothing like it did uh, some 75 years ago. In fact, it uh, does look a lot like it looked 20 years ago. The property definitely could need, could use a little love. So uh, I don't know. One billion seems quite a bit. It is a great location right there on the center Strip, right next to the Link Promenade. Uh, you've got an inventory of nearly 4,000 rooms, and you've got a very strong clientele, but of course that clientele has been, as a result in part, of its connection to Caesars Rewards and the fact that it's one of the least expensive places to stay on the Strip, has a nice pool area, uh, has kind of a fun, cool, outdoor uh, wildlife habitat that I've always found to be one of the more peaceful places in Las Vegas. Casino was always rocking. I always had reasonably good luck there. It seems like I at least get a little bit more play out of the Flamingo than most places. But it is a casino and a hotel that has seen better days. Uh, the room inventory is mm, mediocre, um, a little inconsistent. Uh, they've done some remodels uh, over the years. At the time they came out, the go rooms were really pretty interesting and cool, but that's like 15 years ago now. Uh, I stayed in one about five years ago, and while it was still kind of cool, it was starting to wear around the edges. Um, the new Flamingo Room, I did stay there a couple of years ago, and I liked it. I thought it was fine. I thought it was more or less on par with the remodeled rooms at Harrah's or Bally's. Um, so, I mean, not a bad place to stay, but I mean, like I said, the room inventory is a little uh, shaky, uh, and there's a lot of work that needs to be done there. And it feels very generic. Uh, it does not feel like there's any flamingos going on. Um, so I hope that if someone does buy this property, they really sort of try to revive the initial feeling of the place as this kind of fun sort of Miami Beach meets Las Vegas meets LA Sunset Strip kind of thing. Uh, because it, it could certainly use a refresh um, it has had a number of them in the past, but hopefully it will get one from whoever this new buyer is. Hey, if you were a person that's been thinking, I could do something with the Flamingo, just get together, you, some of your friends, come up with $1 billion and uh, give the folks at Caesars a call. Okay, I just wanted to thank a number of folks uh, who gave me some suggestions last week on some additional YouTube channels that I might want to check out for the channel of the week feature that we've been doing on here. Um, and I did check out a couple of those. And then about sort of midweek, I stumbled on a channel that I guess I was not entirely aware was a channel. 
um, by a young lady that I had the opportunity to meet, I guess a couple of times, but actually had brunch with in Las Vegas over the Kino Stravaganza weekend. And I uh, uh, thought she had some interesting content. It's not entirely Vegas oriented, but uh, much of it is, and much, almost all of the recent stuff is. There's kind of an interest clearly in food and beverage and that sort of thing. Uh, everybody brings a little bit different approach to their Vegas channel. But I thought I would introduce you today to Miss Kia Bell. And as you can see, she's got a couple of hundred subscribers and, uh, uh, like I said, really delightful, funny, uh, personable young lady. And uh, like I said, I like some of her content and uh, I think you might too. So I will put a link, as I do, to her channel in the show notes below. Uh, go ahead and click through, take a look, see if uh, you like it. If you do, uh, subscribe so that uh, she can build her channel just as we've tried to build ours. Okay, so now we get into the more self-indulgent part of today's show, the fancy-like part of the show. Have no fears, it's not going to be fancy right now. But um, as most of you know that have been watching this channel for a while, and I think most of you who are regular viewers uh, have been watching it for a while, uh, pretty much all of the photography and uh, editing on this channel is actually done on my phone. Uh, I use a program called KineMaster and uh, it works very well. Uh, it has probably 10 times the number of features that I've ever bothered to unlock. Uh, but, uh, you know, sometimes uh, people have asked me like where I get like the little musical backgrounds and stuff. And uh, it's part of the, the I, I, I have like a paid membership and it's part of that paid membership, uh, various different sorts of little bonuses. Um, a few weeks ago, I started uh, looking around at, uh, and uh, realizing that I had this old laptop. Here. This is my old laptop. It's my old Lenovo laptop. And it's like seven years old. Um, and I probably used it quite a bit for a couple of years and then I got my tablet and I ceased to consume uh, any uh, sort of media content on it. I did use it a little bit when I was uh, uh, editing the WordPress uh, um, website that we had for a while, uh, but the last couple of years it's gotten basically no use whatsoever. Uh, it had an old copy of Windows 10 on it uh, that hadn't been updated and uh, has no antivirus software at all. So even going online briefly was like taking a fairly large risk. So I didn't use it very much. I started thinking that I could repurpose the computer and um, uh, I for years uh, ran a desktop computer pretty regularly. I didn't, this is the first laptop I ever purchased. Um, and I had probably the last decade or so that I did that, I had been running a Linux operating system. And for those of you who don't know, it's not Windows, it's not Mac, it's kind of an alternative operating system. It's completely free, uh, open source, um, and there's a lot of people involved in the development of it. Uh, it uh, has gotten increasingly popular and it has gotten much more support as far as um, equipment. Uh, at one time, you know, you had a lot of problems with wireless cards and various proprietary drivers and things like that. But uh, so I thought, well, what if I can get this laptop and, and, and figure out how to install a sort of lightweight version of Linux on this thing? Maybe I can use it for something. And it took a while. Um, thing, of course, no DVD, CD drive on these things anymore, even when I bought this one. So I had to figure out how to make a USB stick and how to boot the USB stick, which took a lot of work messing around in the BIOS, which nobody cares about. But the long and short of it is, I have like kind of a new laptop. It's pretty cool. Um, if anybody cares, it's kind of the distribution or distro as they call it is uh, MX Linux and you can't, so it turned itself off. Well, that's lovely. There you go. It's a lovely background called MX Linux. And um, so I thought, well, you know what? I could put some kind of simple video editing software on here and actually try to make something that was a little more fancy-like. So I'm gonna try to do that. 
I've downloaded like five or six different uh, editing programs. And I, I'm not going to try to do anything too crazy because, frankly, the processor on this thing is, is not that great. Um, but uh, I should be able to do incorporate some video clips and maybe some picture-in-picture -picture stuff. Um, so I'm going to play around with that. And sometime over the next, uh, uh, I don't know, month or two, I'll say probably before, by the end of the spring, so within the next six weeks or so, we will do an episode that has fully been edited on the computer. Um, and we'll at least do it once. And uh, if, if it starts, if it works out, if there's some things that I learn, if there's some things that I enjoy playing around with, we might do it more frequently. Maybe that'll become the way we do the show. Who knows? But uh, so keep an eye on that uh, when, uh, when uh, the first edition, of the first fancy Vegas Weekly Show premieres, uh, you'll see that uh, moniker. If you don't always make it to the show to check out the show, you'll want to definitely see how that goes and uh, certainly will appreciate any feedback that you might have on that. But uh, So that's coming up, I would say, in the next three or four weeks, but it depends on how long it takes me to sort of get my bearings and figure out how to, to put something together that's uh, hopefully reasonably good. Okay, speaking of reasonably good... Um, I mentioned last week I was going to go in and kind of re-figure, re-trigger, 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 um, sort of reconfigure the uh, membership program we have on the channel. And I think I put it in about a year and a half ago. Um, yeah, memberships are controversial, um, as I said early in the show. Um, all the content on here is free and will continue to be free, so... Uh, but people do, uh, it's kind when people choose to support the channel in some way. That's very nice. Uh, I support a few channels myself. Of course, the bad part is that Google takes a little piece out of all of it. But uh, whatever, it's nice. It's a little something. Um, and we always had uh, two membership levels, a $4.99 membership level, which almost everyone took advantage of, and then a $9.99 membership channel, which let me give a shout out here today to Lockie Wells, person I've never met, never spoken to as far as I know. I believe he lives in Australia. If you're watching, hello, Lockie, who has been our one and only elite tip and trick, tips and trickster at the $9.99 level for the better part of that year and a half, so... But I, I did notice, I, I noticed this on another channel, uh, that people had some lower priced membership options. And I thought, you know what, I'd, I'd really rather have more members at a lower price than fewer members at a higher price. So um, I, I was going to try to just re, uh, you know, change the pricing on the existing levels, but you can't do that. Um, so we've introduced a $2.99 membership level this week. It's, it's available now if you're interested. And basically, the $299 level does exactly what the $499 level did before, which was it gave you access to these videos early. Uh, basically, anybody, any of the members get access to the videos, typically on Friday night. Uh, depends exactly when, but sometime Friday night, versus non-members sometime Saturday afternoon. So at that point, you'll know that uh, this show is not actually recorded on Saturday, which most of you know anyway. Um, so... And you get these little cute little uh, uh, indications if you're in the live stream or something. It'll say that you're a member. So there you go. You get to be a member. Um, but uh, so that's that's basically the perk of the 299 level. So if you've been at the 499 level and like so many of us are uh, are trying to budget our lives, um, you can feel free to step down to the 299 level if you'd like, and you'll get the same thing. Uh, now, the $4.99 level, I, I left in there um, because it was already there. And the $4.99 level will include a couple of additional perks. One, uh, sort of channel shout-outs. You will be recognized as executive producers of the channel. I will create a little page that will emerge at some point during the show that will credit our $4.99 and up members as executive producers of Vegas Weekly. So if you've always dreamed of that, I don't know why you would, uh, that's your opportunity there. In addition, when, I said when, not if, we bring back Vegas Tips and Tricks merchandise, you'll get a discount on all merchandise. Um, basically, it will be yours at cost. So if you're interested in any VT&T merchandise, which will be coming up sometime the rest during this year, um, it will get you that merchandise, like I said, pretty much at cost. Um, 
at the 999 level, in case anybody wants to join at the 999 level, it is my concierge level. And at the concierge level, you can reach out to me at least, well, at least, uh, a couple of times a year, and I will help you personally plan your Vegas trip. You tell me when you're going, from where you're going, uh, where you want to stay. Uh, I will do a bunch of legwork and see if I can, what's the best deal I can find you, that sort of thing. Make some suggestions, give you some kind of a report, whether it be a video or, or a written report at your convenience. But like I said, you can do that up to two times a year. If you are at the concierge level, the elite tips and tricksters. I don't imagine a lot of people choosing that option, but uh, it is there if you want to keep it. If Lockie wants to keep it, although I don't know how good I'm going to be at booking uh, uh, or finding uh, airfare from Australia. But So that's what's up with the membership program. If you're interested in it, you can hit that little join button and I'll tell you all about it. If you're not interested in it, that's okay. Uh, like I said, it's not something I talk about very frequently, uh, but uh, there you go. We have, in fact, updated it. Okay, well, that's going to wrap up the show for this week. If you have any uh, feedback, uh, please leave it in the comments below. Like I said, check out Kia Bell. Uh, look for our new fancy show. Uh, and as always, we will be back uh, next week with another episode of Vegas Weekly. And until then, I hope that you have a great, lucky, and healthy week. We'll see you all again real soon. Bye-bye.